Hello everyone, it's Heather and today is another vlog rewatch video where I watch one of my older vlogs from before the pandemic and give you commentary on it. Now this particular video today is from our trip to Walt Disney World in Florida in March of 2019. On this day, which was the third day we were at Walt Disney World, we went to Magic Kingdom and spent the whole day there. As I said in a previous video, I'm going to skip the parts of the video at the very beginning and at the very end, which I filmed in our hotel room at Pop Century, where I give kind of a little overview of what we're planning to do that day, and then I kind of talk at the end about how the day went and things like that, and I'm just gonna show you the portions of the video that are actually in Magic Kingdom. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you enjoy this vlog rewind. All right, so I'm starting it right at the end of my little intro that I filmed in Pop Century, and here we go. We got on the bus um, before 8, uh, 7.45, 50 maybe, and it's now 8.15. Um, we got seats on the bus. We got through security and um, entry pretty quick. The park opens at 9, and I mean, there's a few people here, and it's very foggy and kind of misty this morning. It's a little, little chilly. We're actually kind of wishing we'd brought, like, sweaters. Okay, so first of all, I apologize. The video is buffering a little bit. I don't know why I'm filming this on an early afternoon on a Saturday. It shouldn't have any in interference from anything. But okay, so the first things I noticed was uh, very proud of us because we got up very early this day. If we had gotten to the park at 8.15, which is pretty early, and the park wasn't open yet, and I'm noticing the weather. The weather can really vary a lot at Walt Disney World at spring break time in March. And so this would have been mid-March. As you can see, it's quite foggy. Everything is a little bit damp. But other days we were there, it could vary. And, and other years that we've been there, it can vary from being really cold to being really, really hot. And in fact, if you watched my previous video that I did from the day before this when we went to Animal Kingdom, which I'll link up above, it was very hot that day. And there was another day that we went back to Magic Kingdom on this same trip that it was so chilly we had to wear pants and jackets. So the weather can vary a lot when you're at, Mad at Walt Disney World in March. But it is supposed to get to 80 today, so we didn't want to carry them. It is supposed to rain this afternoon. So um, we're, we're kind of planning on doing in between like three and six we have our skipper canteen oh that's neat we have skipper canteen at 5 15 so that'll take care of some of it and we have jungle cruise right before that which has an inch uh, covered queue you know the boats have rubs so we should be okay couple of things i noticed here first of all i am obviously filming this with the gopro again which i know now <laughs> not to do for t vlogs like this the GoPro is actually very shaky. And also the GoPro has a much wider angle of filming. And it's, so it's, as you can, you know, it's just, a, it's kind of skewed, it's strange. So I've learned to, in more recent times, to use either my Canon PowerShot camera or my cell phone to film vlogs, except for if I'm trying to get something like action-y. Two other things I noticed that are relevant during the pandemic. One is the Main Street vehicle that I commented on. The Main Street vehicles have not been running at all since Disney World reopened in July 2020. And also right here is the Main Street Confectionery, which we went in and bought stuff several times on this trip. The Main Street Confectionery is closed from the end of March through at least the end of May. That's as far out when I'm filming this as the refurbishment schedule shows. And so the Main Street Confectionery, if that's one of your favorite places to go and you're going to be visiting Walt Disney World during that time, spring, early summer, maybe of 2021, know that the Main Street Confectionery is undergoing an extensive refurbishment and will be closed during that time. And uh, we're trying to rope drop Seven Dwarfs Mine Train this morning. I'll keep you up posted this is kind of a touring plan sort of thing on how long it takes us and our success in getting on that. Oh my goodness, you can barely even see that the castle is there. Look how foggy it was. You can, I mean, you can just see kind of a shape of something down at the end of Main Street there. There's the castle shrouded in fog. 
We didn't even know it was a Look at everyone, a wedding! We thought, we thought it was just a wedding pavilion. Okay, so we stumbled upon a wedding in the hub grass there. This is one of the places that you can have a wedding, and that gentleman just said to me, we thought you could only have weddings in the wedding pavilion. A lot of people think that, but there are actually numerous places on Walt Disney World property that you can have weddings. However, this is also something people don't know. You can only have them early, early, early in the morning. <laughs> and the reason for that is because they don't want weddings to interfere with the normal guest experience. So, and as you can see, these people were having their wedding at 8, 15 in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning it probably started, but they still have guests walking by and watching it because they had let guests into the park early to line up, like to rope drop like we were. If you have your wedding in a park, you're going to have to be prepared for the fact that there's going to be guests milling around. You can have your wedding in the wedding pavilion. There's several resorts that you can hold your weddings in. The other thing I want to tell you about having a wedding at Walt Disney World is it is extremely expensive. There is a place on the Walt Disney World website where you can find out information about weddings and that will tell you more. I'll try to remember to put a link to it down below in the description box. Plus you have to get your tickets for all your guests to come into the park. Right, well, no, it's, you don't because it's always before park opening. You have to do it really early in the morning. If you look back past this white table with the glasses on it here, there's like the garbage can and then there's like a white table. In the distance, you can see the bride and her white dress. And behind her is the white Cinderella carriage. That's something you can pay for extra on top of the expense of the wedding. And so she must have come in that carriage and arrived that way. You can do it at any of the resort hotels, you know. Mm. Carriage, though. See the carriage? Yeah. The Cinderella carriage yeah, with the horses? Did they? And came around? Yeah, look at this. We were just standing right there when they packed. There's six horses. Oh. Are there six? Yeah, there's six. Oh my goodness. I love your Star there's Wars dress. That's cool. White ponies. I always talk to little kids. <laughs> Let's there's move on. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. We stopped for a couple of pictures. We stopped for one by the partner statue in front of the castle. We stopped to look at that wedding for a little bit. And we stopped to take a picture about two-thirds of the way down Main Street. And now here's the line where rope drop is. Good morning. morning. This is to Fantasyland with the Cardinal. Yep. Okay. So if you're not familiar, nice there with the, the fingers, Heather. <laughs> if you're not familiar with how rope drop works, and I'm not sure if it's still working the same at Magic Kingdom right now during the pandemic, but they will let people in about this far, and then there's literally a rope across the pathway, but there's, we were on the pathway that goes to Fantasyland because we wanted to rope drop Seven Dwarfs Spine Train because this was the only time we got to ride it on this trip because we couldn't get a fast pass for it because we booked this trip quite last minute after I had gotten my tax refund that year. And then if you want to go to Adventureland, there's a rope across that pathway. And if you want to go toward Frontierland and stuff, there's a rope across that pathway. And I think there's one going toward Tomorrowland too. So all the different ways off the hub. And so you only can go as far as that rope and everybody kind of piles in and stops there. I can't believe they would be doing it like this right now because of social distancing. So if anybody knows how they're doing rope drop, are they even doing it right now during the pandemic? Leave a comment down below. I'm kind of curious about that. So anyway, you can see here how we did it before the pandemic. Everybody just kind of piles in and crams in. And then they either will just take the rope away or they will back everybody up. Like the cast members will carry the rope and back everybody up slowly towards the land. And the reason they do that, and I actually talk about this coming up, is because they don't want people to run. And because that's not safe, and they don't want people to like get trampled and stuff. Managed to squeeze her way pretty far forward, the front of the line. Look at all the people that had piled in behind us. Uh, the people behind us, but we're pretty close to the front, so hopefully we don't get trampled. Nine oh one, and we're in the queue for. Seven Dwarfs, and it's moving quick. We were way at the front, but it was a mad rush. <laughs> People
people were running. So we got we got here very quickly, but there were a lot of cast members to guide people, pushing people straight over against the fence, against the stone wall. It is raining a little. It's kind of misting. I'll tell you what time we get off. It's 9.02. We, we just got off of Seven Doors Mine Train, and it's 9.20. So, um, it's a little wait. What is it at? Oh, okay, maybe not then. What, what else is close? Um, the line, what's the line for this now? What's the time on this, Meg? 70. It's up to 70, and it's 9.20. One. So we're going to... So Megan was looking at the My Disney Experience app for the ride times after we got off Seven Dwarfs Vine Train. So we had entered the park at 8.15. We were in line for Seven Dwarfs Vine Train by 9.02, and we were through the line and off the ride by 9.20. So that's pretty good. But by the time we had gotten off the ride, the the wait time for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train was already up to 70 minutes. By the way, if you don't know how they figure that out, if you've never experienced this, they actually hand people, and I don't know if they still do it this way, but they were still doing it this way when we were on this trip because they gave it to me a couple times. They will hand someone in line a thing something to hold, and they will say, please give this to the cast member when you get to the front of the line. And so they know what time they handed someone, a guest, that item. And I can't remember what exactly the object is that they hand you. It's just something that you hold. It's like a card or something. And then you give it to the cast member when you get to the front of the line, so then they know how long it took me to go from this point to this point, and that's how they kind of figure it out. And they, they keep doing that constantly to adjust the, the wait times. And I don't know if they're still doing it that way or if they have some more technologically advanced way of doing it, but that has always worked fine. And by the time we got off the ride here, so only 20 minutes after the park had opened, the lines for everything in Fantasyland were really long. So that's how quickly queues get long in Magic Kingdom in the morning. I'm gonna go try to ride something else because we have a 950 poo fast pass. This is all of our first time riding the Prince Charming Regal Carousel. Um, the Wicked Stepsisters are on board with us. There's Gisela. And Anastasia's up there somewhere. There's Mom and Ben. Say hi! So? You can hear the Wicked Stepsisters. They were screeching and like calling things out to people. It was really funny that they actually got on the carousel with us. things out to Ben around us in Fantasyland. There's the back of the castle, which I think is prettier than the front of the castle. By the way, I played her once in a high school production of Cinderella. <laughs> they put a prosthetic nose on me and blacked out one of my teeth and made me quite obnoxious. And I wore a big green and blue dress like that. There's a lot of detail on those carousel horses. They're very pretty. Looks like you're stopping. <laughs> so
So we had had 30 minutes between the time we got off of Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and when we had our Fast Pass for the Winnie the Pooh ride. And in that 30 minutes, we managed to get on and ride the carousel. Now, I didn't film anything on the Winnie the Pooh ride. I really like the Winnie the Pooh ride, and I, I like to just enjoy the experience, so I didn't film anything on the ride. But something very interesting happened to us on the Winnie the Pooh ride this time, and that's what I'm about to explain. Okay, so that was fun. Uh, we just got evacuated off of the Pooh ride. So we had to wait a little while until they came and got us out of our honey pot. However, it actually turned out okay for us because we were almost done. We were right, like, there. And um, they gave us a free fast pass to use for our trouble. So that was kind of nice. So that was our little adventure of the day. <laughs> So we had ridden almost the entire ride, and then the ride broke down. Um, it's a it's a typical dark ride at, at Walt Disney World where you, you know, you load out here in the public area, and then you go behind a wall, and all the ride is in like the backstage area where the public can't see. And then you would come out again into that place where you load again, like come around a wall. And our honey pot had stopped right there, right before we rounded the corner of that wall to go back out where you load and unload the ride. So we had gotten to experience the entire ride anyway. And we're like 30 seconds from getting unloaded from our honey pot when the ride broke down. We had to sit there for quite a while before they came with like a little step stool so we could, because where you load is raised, but when you're on the actual ride, the honey pots are pretty high off the ground. And so they came and brought like a step stool thing and set it down next to our honey pot and then opened the door so we could take the couple of steps down to the ground where the track is. And then they escorted us out of the ride through an exit. Where I'm filming this is the little poo themed gift shop right at the end of the poo ride. Um, this is Goofy's Barnstormer in Storybook Circus in Fantasyland. And Megan and Ben should be on this train. Yep, I see them. They're in the very back. Megan has her hands up. She's wearing a pink shirt. Ben has on a green shirt. <laughs> she waved at me. There they are. I'm not sure about this, but I think the Barnstormer might be the shortest ride at Walt Disney World. It's not even 60 seconds long. It's a very short ride. <laughs> Came into this art shop next to Gaston's Tavern while Ben went to the bathroom and there's these beautiful canvas prints. I love this one. That was my favorite. That's gorgeous. And Megan just realized she has this, these are Thomas Kincaid's. And Megan's, Megan has these on a calendar right now. But these are actual canvas prints. Magic Kingdom seems to be having some sort of systematic problem today. Um, after we were evacuated off the pool ride and given fast passes, we noticed that Seven Dwarfs Mine Train was also down, right, for a little while, but that's been back up since then. And then a little while ago, we walked past Ariel's Undersea Adventure, and that was closed. And now we're almost about to the point of being able to board our boats at... It's a small world and everything has stopped. And so yeah, that was a very interesting day because they seem to be having ride shutdowns all over the place, all at around the same time. Rides were going down and then coming back up. And so the fact that we got evacuated off the Pooh ride that morning, I don't think that was unusual. And something we ran into, a different problem here, which was that usually, uh, even though the line looks really long at on It's a Small World, because it's kind of a continuously loading boat ride, you can usually get through that queue pretty fast. And so we were trying to squeeze in a ride on It's a Small World before we had our lunch reservation at Be Our Guest. And because this happened and the ride broke down, we ran into a problem. And we're just standing and people have been going in and out of the control booth. One of the managers just took a picture of the stuck boats. Like maybe she was going to text somebody and say, what do we do or something? I don't know. I really hope we're not this close and end up not being able to ride it. That would stink. 
update, we actually had to ask the cast members to let us out of the line at um, It's a Small World. They must have been pretty confident they were going to get it fixed because they weren't trying to get everybody off and give away fast passes, but um, we realized we had to get to our VR guest reservation, so we had to ask them to let us out and they escorted us out through a series of chains. Um, and so we didn't get to ride it, but we rode it the other day. Um, we were basically just using it as a time filler till lunch anyway. Now we are walking over to be our guest for lunch, and we will do a separate video on a review of that. Thanks. I will link up above our review of our lunch at Be Our Guest. We had a very good experience for lunch that day. So this was a little different experience than what happened on the Pooh Ride. On the Pooh Ride, the ride broke down. They didn't think they were going to be able to get it going again. And so they evacuated everyone off the ride and gave everybody a fast pass for their trouble. This time, the ride was broken down, but they must have felt that they were going to be able to get it started again. So they didn't evacuate everyone. They didn't, you know, tell everybody in the line to to go and they didn't give anybody fast passes at least at the point that we left so what happened to us was we were stuck in the queue and couldn't get out and we had to flag down a cast member and say hey we have a reservation at be our guest can you please help us get out of here and they had to take us some weird way through a whole bunch of chains that they had to move to get us out of the ride because we were kind of deep in the queue in the middle of the queue there right before the loading area. So that was kind of unusual too. But just know that you can do that if you ever find yourself in a situation like that and the cast members will help you. Ben and I are taking another ride on the people over while Maggie goes on Space Mountain with the free fast pass that she got when the pool broke down. So we each got a fast pass when the pool ride broke down but we didn't have to all use our fast passes on the same ride. We could use it on any ride that we wanted to, with exceptions. When they give you one of those inconvenience fast passes, they will tell you, you can use this on anything except this, this, and this. And one of the things they said we couldn't use it on was Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So generally, they won't let you use those on the most popular rides because then they'd have just, you know, people slamming and, you know, totally overwhelming that ride. So we went on the People Mover, which is when it's running, it's been broken down for a long time now. By the time this video goes up, maybe it's going again, I'm not sure, but we went on the People Mover because that's usually something you can get on fairly quickly. While Megan went and rode Space Mountain with her Fast Pass, Ben and I still had ours so we could use them later. It's gotten very sunny and hot and the park is very crowded, probably because it's Saturday. We had stopped there to see great moments in history with the Muppets in Liberty Square. Unfortunately, that has ended now and they're not doing it anymore. So if you missed it, I'm sorry. Heather is trying the pineapple, pineapple upside, upside down, down cake Dole with Dole Whip cake from Aloha Isle. The mobile ordering was not working like it should. They were actually not making stuff until people actually got up there, even though they told us it was ready. But it was still pretty quick. And oh my gosh, this is so good. Is it like the pineapple upside down cake you had at the resort? This one's better. She, what she's referring to there is the day we arrived at Walt Disney World and had lunch at Pop Century, I got the pineapple upside down cake, just the cake part. And it made me want to try this, which I knew was something they had then. I don't know if they still have this. Somebody let me know in the comments. Where it's the pineapple upside down cake with Dole Whip on top. And I said, this one is better. And my guess is because they sell more of this than they do at Pop Century, and so these are probably fresher. It was probably more moist and soft, I think. <laughs> and this is better than the Dole Whip that I got yesterday uh, at... You um, did say you thought Animal the Kingdom. one at Magic Kingdom was better. The one at Animal Kingdom was yellower, and I almost think they gave me the lemon stuff. Oh. This is the pineapple. When we came out from dinner at Skipper Canteen, it was starting to rain. I didn't show every ride we went on obviously and we had dinner at Skipper Canteen and I did do a separate video about that which I will also link up above if I still have room and by now you can see it's getting dark we've, so we've been there all day 
and it was raining pretty hard when I was filming this part and we were sitting on this bench trying to stay dry under that little roof area. And it's been pouring now for, I don't know. Yeah, getting over it. Yeah. We made our way to the, well, I had to go to the bathroom and then the kids made it to the Emporium and we, we shopped around the Emporium for a while. We bought, no, we didn't buy anything, did we? No. But the kids went over across the street to the confectionery and bought cake pops. And we're sitting here in the little area by the fire station and the guest services. And it's on a bench that's a little damp because it's right there. But um, for the most part, we're okay. And we're just going to see how it's really pretty, actually, because they just turned the lights on. Um, it's supposed to be pouring for about another... 15 or 20 minutes, but see all the people leaving? Our plan was to leave and go around to the deluxe resorts on the monorail after dinner, um, but we don't want to try to get on the monorail now because everybody's going to be leaving and it's going to be wet. And, it's gonna be wet. and so um, we're going to wait until it stops and then, uh, we're go and then we're going to go. So we're going to wait for the rush of people leaving to leave. So there's a little tip for you. If it's raining pretty hard when you're at a theme park at Walt Disney World, you need to know two things. One, rain doesn't usually last that long in Florida. I mean, sometimes it does, you know, an hour or two. But for the most part, usually rain showers will be 20, 30 minutes maybe. And then the other thing is when it rains and you're at Walt Disney World or Universal is probably the same way, most of the people leave. Most of the people leave the park and go back to their hotels or go home or whatever. So if you have a rain jacket or a poncho or you don't mind getting wet or you can find a place to take shelter and just wait it out, if that happens, it can actually be a good time to go get on more rides and stuff because the line times will drop considerably. Now, what we ended up doing on this particular evening, which I don't show, but I talk about at the end of the video, is we ended up going across the street to meet Mickey and Minnie in their 90th birthday costumes, which they only wore for a short time when we were there. And we had a really great meet and greet with Mickey and Minnie. I'll put a picture in right here if I can find one. And then after we did that, then we left. What am I looking at, Maggie? We did get on the monorail and rode the monorail around and we saw the electrical water pageant out in, I can never remember if it's Seven Seas Lagoon or Bay Lake, which one is which, out in the water in front of Magic Kingdom there. And this was me kind of trying to film it from the monorail. to get the Mary Blair mural. Yeah. Here we're, we're at the, this was the stop at the Contemporary Resort. I was trying to get the... But you said, I, it was at 245. See, it's like a dragon. There's a sea. There you can see out in the middle of the water, you can see the floats. It looks like a dragon. I've never seen it. Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. Our next stop is the Magic Kingdom, with continuing service to Disney's Contemporary wow, Resort awesome. and the Transportation and Ticket Center. Sorry, it's dark. To their pool area. This is the Grand Floridian, and there's their main pool area. <laughs> Okay, so what we had done there is after we met Mickey and Minnie, we got on the resort monorail, which makes a loop from Magic Kingdom to the Contemporary to the Ticket and Transportation Center, Polynesian, Grand Floridian, and then back to Magic Kingdom. I think I have that order right. It just goes in a circle. And we rode the loop once around. We did not get off at all. And then when we got back to Magic Kingdom, we got off the monorail, went to our resort bus, and rode the bus back to Pop Century. And then this last part of the video is where I'm talking about what we did that day and explaining everything.
I hope that you enjoyed this vlog rewatch. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please be sure to subscribe. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Safe travels.